Th this session is a fabulous session I, I, uh, of compelling stories of new pharmaceutical and medical device opportunities. And uh, I uh, came across them, quite frankly, at a meeting, uh, a fabulous meeting that was organized by YISM, which is Hebrew U University's Transfer of Technology Corporation. We're delighted that the head of YISM is going to be here. We're going to hear from him shortly. Uh, but I discovered in my own studies about small business that the creation of innovation really started adjacent to a university and uh, triggered uh, innovation and commercialization. How you take ideas, as Gordon Nixon said, from research and transfer them and commercialize them. And, and the key bridge to that are transfer technology corporations. Uh, Stanford U Research uh, started the Silicon Valley in, Stanford, in, in Palo Alto. And we have somebody that will come and talk, talk to us about that in a few minutes. Um, MIT, you all know, had Media Lab. I went there many years ago and stole some ideas from Media Lab at MIT. Harvard does the same thing. Uh, Oxford University, Cambridge University, adjacent to all great universities now are transfer technology areas to take the ideas from the university and then commercialize them. And today, uh, we're going to hear from uh, uh, three wonderful stories, one from Ontario, uh, two from Israel, that I heard and I saw uh, that really uh, uh, turned my mind over. And as a result, I've invited a number of hospital uh, technologists to come here to listen to their these two stories. And they're quite compelling because one of the issues in Toronto and in Ontario and all over the world is how do we depress the growing costs of medical services. And the question is, there's only one way to do it, and that's through innovation. So our first uh, speaker is uh, Peter Vandergritten, who has served the health industry as a senior executive in healthcare software. Um, he's had service companies called Quadramed, IMS, National Health Data, SAP, uh, OSIS Healthcare, um, HOBC, and his areas include uh, software product development, sales marketing, professional services. He's an extraordinary man uh, who has a BS from compu uh, in computer science, and he is involved in this wonderful, wonderful, uh, essentially startup company that I hope we can sell or help him sell right here in Toronto down the street. So our first speaker is uh, Peter. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank you for listening ahead of time. Um, so just, uh, I, I kind of had a similar experience to Jerry. I was working for a company in Atlanta, Georgia, and I got called by a little tiny Israeli company, and they asked me to come down and talk to them, and I came down, and I thought they were crazy. Um, and what they've accomplished uh, in Israel is, is really, I think, quite amazing, uh, and I'd like to share with you a little bit about that, uh, about what they were able to do. Um, the company actually got started uh, as a group of technology folks um, to try and uh, help uh, Qalit, which is a very large, uh, I think the term might be used, HMO. But it's, it's will, if you will, it's a province within the, the, the country of Israel that treats all of the uh, uh, people that belong to unions. And they provide health care for all the union employees all over the, uh, all over the state of Israel. Um, and really, this is our current situation. We have about 130 employees located in Tel Aviv and uh, in Omer. Um, our, I'd like to talk a little bit, of, though, about what we try and do. And if you're familiar with the healthcare world, the problem right now in healthcare is we've got a lot of automation going on in every single hospital. There's a huge push now to get doctors to put in systems as electronic medical records and put all of the patient's care, our care, uh, in an automated fashion. But you can imagine none of these computers talk to each other. Uh, and the problem is that that creates a huge problem in treating patients because as you go from one healthcare provider to another, as you go from talking to your healthcare GP and going to the emergency room, that emergency room physician knows nothing about you. And yet, probably there's five or six computer systems in your community that has information. This is just an example. We're installed at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, which was our first uh, account here in uh, North America. Uh, Saturday night at the emergency room department, 29-year-old 20 drunk presents themselves. This is just a quick look at what a computer system that a doctor would look at. His name was Barfighter. And you can see from that computer systems, there's nothing wrong with this individual. 
absolutely nothing. By one click of the key up there at the top that you see, they launch what we provide, which is DB Motion. And what we've just done, obviously not today, but what's being done at the Pittsburgh uh, Presbyterian Emergency Room Department is messages have gone out to all the other computer systems in Pittsburgh and what we brought back here is all of the problem lists and all of the other information that can be provided on this particular um, uh, patient and as you saw they're HIV positive which in diagnosing and treating that particular patient plus prepping and etc is there. Um, so a very powerful uh, tool for the clinician to be able to do that. Uh, another example is a 64-year-old uh, patient, and these literally were, were uh, found in the first day of going live with our, uh, our system. Uh, patient visiting their, what we call the primary care physician, the uh, EMR system, the doctor's computer system had in it that they had prostate cancer and they were allergic to codeine, and again, that was it. That was the only bit of information that was in that computer system on that particular patient. Again, same thing, um, by one click of the button, the clinician was able to see what was going on with that patient um, wherever that patient had been treated, mostly in Pittsburgh in that particular example. Um, we're in the process today of going live in Manitoba, in Winnipeg, with the Winnipeg Regional Health Authority. And again, not maybe, quite the same level of problems, but certainly the same type of problems that all five hospitals in Winnipeg don't necessarily communicate. They certainly don't communicate with the private physicians, the general practitioners, urologists, uh, endocrinologists, et cetera. All of their com computer systems don't talk, and we're, we're uh, trying to do that. Um, if you look at um, what, where we got started, it was at Colite. Um, and I think it's an interesting story because it talks about why people need to do this. I mean, I think I presented a, at least a clinical sense, and there's thousands more examples of why this is important uh, to reduce the cost of health care. Uh, but the other problem is that there's other ways to look at this animal. And Colite was kind of faced with this issue of they had about four million patients that they were treating. Um, they were treating patients at a number of different hospitals, 14 hospitals, thousands of clinics, and they had all sorts of different computer systems, similar to Manitoba, similar to the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. But they were faced with the dilemma, do we wipe everything out? Do we just install one gigantic computer system, which those of us are in the computer science business, that's like Mecca, right? Uh, or probably Me Mecca's the wrong point here. Um, <clears throat> Um, yeah, yeah, uh, there you go. Uh, but that, that's like, nir yeah, it's nirvana uh, to, us, to us computer science geeks from that particular standpoint. Um, and so they decided we just can't afford it. It was huge expenses, millions and billions of dollars to be able to treat four million patients in that particular guard. And you can see here there were 16 hospitals all over the state of Israel in, in various different locations, um, thousands of clinics all over, and how do you tie them all together? Um, and, and that's what, in essence, we did with the DB Motion product, was to bring all of those systems together. Interesting phenomena that happened um, in Israel several years ago, I was actually there at the time uh, for one of our um, uh, management sessions, and uh, Haifa, if you're familiar with the geography of Israel, is in the far northwest corner there, uh, right on the Lebanese border, and you probably recall what happened several years ago when they were sending little tiny rockets over into Haifa from the Lebanese border. That town, in essence, was evacuated, and most of the people went to their relatives in Tel Aviv or in the southern part of the, uh, southern part of the country. Um, and because of the way DB Motion operates, uh, in the sense of a decentralized environment, we don't uh, put... Um, one centralized computer, we have all of these decentralized computers. When the population moved to Tel Aviv, and only most of the people, the, some of the critically care stayed in Haifa, but most of the population moved out, um, we were still able to treat the patient. So a diabetic patient that could be on several different drugs and have had numerous different lab tests telling them what's wrong with them, hemoglobin A1C, et cetera, type, type of thing, 
all of that information was available to the clinician treating the patient down in Tel Aviv. Um, when the, when the uh, hostilities were over and things returned to normal, everybody returned back to, to Haifa and their regular physician. All of the, th the, the patient information that was done while they, were in Tel while they were in Tel Aviv was actually now available to the clinician when they were back uh, at Haifa. Um, so you can see both from a disaster standpoint, but just from a day-to-day -day standpoint, um, it's vital that we be able to communicate um, between all of these computer systems. And I, I didn't think I was ever going to be this old, but I, I've been doing this for 35 years. And um, it, we've never seen anything like this in, in North America to be able to do that. Um, and it, it's quite frankly why I joined the company, because I, I could not believe almost 100% of the clinicians are you, physicians are using the system. I, are there any physicians in the room? No, just doctors. I, you know, if you've ever tried to convince a doctor to use a computer system, it is a very, very interesting process. Um, and it's like asking them to, to, to go from what they've used to do, which all of us, I see most people have paper in front of them and they're taking notes. Some, some don't. Um, it's asking them to take that paper chart and put it into a computer system. And they've literally done that in Israel. 99% of the clinicians use the computer system to treat their patients. And all of that data is going back and forth between, uh, between the other systems. Um, we, uh, I won't go into kind of all of the technology we use. It's probably boring to most of you. Um, but we, in essence, are able, because we offer a SOA-based platform, a, a service-oriented architecture that goes out and gets information and pulls it back, we can also work with things like BlackBerry. So the doctor can use BlackBerry to get their information wherever they are. Uh, I, it sounds like it might be a bad word here, but we can uh, link up with Google, uh, their PHR system from that particular standpoint, and deliver back to the patient their clinical information from all their particular doctors. Um, we have a number of customers, um, uh, almost 10 years in delivering healthcare solutions right now. It's taken a while to get started, as most of us know in the startup uh, 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 business, but we have a number of customers now in the process of going live um, in the United States. And as I mentioned, knock on wood somewhere, uh, we will be live in uh, Winnipeg in about two weeks. So we're almost ready to go up, and there we'll have about 2,000 clinicians using the system on a daily basis to treat all of the patients in Winnipeg to understand, or Winnipeg and Manitoba uh, throughout the province of Manitoba.